What's happening, Norm? Well, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Sammy, and I'm wearing milk-bone underwear. And I'm wearing crimson and cream and wearing it proudly, as you can tell. Sooners and the Miners, Oklahoma versus Texas, El Paso meeting for just the fourth time ever. The Sooners have won all three meetings, and barring something just completely unforeseen, Oklahoma will not only make it 4-0 against the Miners' lifetime, but they'll extend the nation's current longest winning streak to 11. Of course, next week, all eyes will be on the horseshoe in Columbus against the Buckeyes. We'll talk more about that in the upcoming days. The Sooners originally opened up as a... 45 and a half point favorite that has dropped down to 43. I'm not sure why, but of course, that's a lot of points. That's a ton of points, especially for the first game of the season. It is the Lincoln Riley era. And uh, by the way, the Sooners already released their uh, depth chart, their first depth chart for the season. Uh, give us an idea of who's going to start, you know, where certain players stack up per position. And one thing that stuck out was who wasn't starting at wideout, Jeff Bidette. Now, we thought that this would be an absolute shoe-in, that he would be a starter for the season opener. Not the case. And who knows if Lincoln Riley will follow this um, depth chart to a T. Maybe it's motivation for Bidette. I don't know. Or maybe the other receivers have looked better than him so far in practice. Who, who knows the real reason? We'll never know why. But Bidette will back up Jeffrey Meade at the Z wide receiving position. Meade, a veteran. And then C.D. Lamb, a freshman. Gets the start at the X position. That's right. A freshman in C.D. Lamb is going to get the start at the X position. Um, and, of course, you got Mark Andrews who will start in the slot. You'll have also, to um, Mikael Jones as a starter at wideout. Um, looking at the ground attack, looking at running backs on the depth chart, well, you're not going to see them, okay? Right now they don't have a listed starting tailback. And um, that tells me it's going to be running back by committee, at least for game number one. I think – Abdul Adams, the veteran, is going to get um, more touches than the other guys um, if the game works the way I think it will. That doesn't mean, though, that Rodney Anderson or Trey Sermon or Marcellia Sutton is not going to get touches. I think they all will. I think it will be running back by committee, and I'll give you another reason why I think it will be running back by committee later in the show. Looking at the defense, really no variation from what we previewed on the OU team-by-team uh, -team preview. If you haven't seen it, please check it out on this very web page. The defense, middle linebacker, they are going to go with the true freshman in Kenneth Murray, and they are going to start Parnell Motley on the corner opposite of uh, Jordan Thomas. Jordan Parker, by the way, will back up Motley. Uh, will Johnson, he will start at free safety. And the guy that will be playing the nickelback position looks like will be Robert Barnes, whose dad, Reggie Barnes, was one heck of a player at OU the previous generation. Now let's talk a little bit about Texas El Paso. The Miners, uh, this is a bad team. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it doesn't look good at all this Saturday, at least if you're a Texas El Paso Miner fan. Coming off a four-win season, only two conference wins this last year. Their head coach, Sean Kugler, is on the hot seat. I will say one uh, positive thing for Sean Kugler, though. He knows what it's like to beat Oklahoma as a coach. Sort of. He was an assistant coach for the Boise State Broncos that dreadful night, if you're a Sooner fan, um, in uh, Glendale, Arizona, and the upset win that Boise State registered against the Sooners. And again, Sean Kugler was an assistant on Chris Peterson's staff. But... Uh, um, we thought that was a shocker that night. It would be the shocker of all times if UTEP were to pull off the upset on Saturday, which I and just about any sane fan out there don't think will happen. Um, looking at the offense for UTEP, it was mostly the ground attack last year. In fact, they had more rushing yards than passing. Uh, the rushing total was good, 185 per game. Now, what really hurts uh, Texas El Paso entering this particular game, they won't have a guy that made a lot of that rushing yardage possible. That's Aaron Jones. He left early for the NFL, a big-time void, maybe the biggest loss that UTEP could have suffered. So the ground game, a bit of an enigma. We do know Ryan Metz is back at quarterback. He threw for 14 touchdown passes last season. That's not very many, but um, it's the most that any UTEP quarterback had thrown over the last six seasons. That's how dismal the passing game's been. In fact, they only attempted 27 passes per game. You have a feeling that if, you, that if UTEP is going to have any offensive success, any at all, they're going to have to throw it more than 27 times. UTEP will have to. So there's just no other way of stating it. Looking at the receivers, um, they're going to be fairly raw in this area. Offensive line, four of the six have to be re replaced. But their most decorated player 
is a left guard, okay? And I think he'll be in the NFL. Will Hernandez, one publication, thinks that he could be as high as second-team All-American, 6'3", 330, a reliable player. Problem with the minors, though, of UTEP, they don't have anywhere that near that experience or that caliber with the other offensive linemen. So they got one terrific one, and then the rest after that, probably average or below that. Defensively, uh, the Miners gave up a whopping 35 points per game last year that ranked 105th nationally. Uh, biggest reason why was because they were getting pushed back on the line of scrimmage. Uh, they gave up a whopping 210 yards of rushing per game. That was only 96 out of 128 teams. And this year, they lost all their um, starting defensive linemen except for one defensive end, Mike Soda. Um, I think their linebacker is good, though, in Alvin Jones, 93 tackles, two and a half sacks. And the secondary held their own, uh, giving up only 209 yards of passing yards per game. And they do return three of the four uh, defensive backs, including uh, both corners. Um, but the thing is, I just don't think UTEP's defense is going to um, – be that physical, they're going to have to take some risks. They're going to have to take some chances. And, yeah, oh, you could get some big plays by that, but it also might work to UTEP's advantage to be a little bit on the gambling side because you never know. You might be able to force a turnover or get some big um, plays of lost yardage. So what have you got to lose if you're the UTEP defense? But I would expect Oklahoma to have a heyday. But the thing I think they've got to do the Sooners, getting back to the ground attack, is go run by committee. You know, it's no big coach's secret. In fact, Vince Lombardi doesn't have to tell you this. Um, I'll tell you this, and you could probably say this before it even comes out of my mouth. If you know what the defense's biggest weakness is, attack it. And from all indication, it's run defense. So this might be a game where, you know, I'm not saying Baker Mayfield won't throw, but I'm saying that, you know, in this case, he may not have to throw a whole lot. Leave it up to the running back. Leave it up to your veteran offensive line to dominate, to wear UTEP down and to where you could put a lot of points on the board in that first half. And that way, coming out of the locker room at halftime, um, you're keeping an eye on the backups because you can get those guys in uh, with plenty of time in the second half and then focus on Ohio State. That's the whole goal is to try to get this thing put away as early as possible. Don't give UTEP any hope at all, any array of hope that come fourth quarter, they still have a prayer in this game. If this game goes away, I think it will go Late third quarter at fourth or early fourth quarter at the latest, you'll see Baker Mayfield on the sideline with a big smile um, chatting with teammates because at that point we know that the game's in the back. Any more final thoughts on this game? Well, it's not really a question of Oklahoma winning. It's a question of will they cover that 45-point spread. I don't think they're going to. I think that they will get up by that many. But I don't think the game will finish that way, I think, uh, because um, UTEP will be doing everything in their might in that fourth quarter to try to salvage some points. I do think that uh, Utah probably will score against the reserves, and I'm going to say that OU will win this game by 38 points. I got 52-14. Um, again, I think UTEP will get some garbage points at the end, and that will certainly make the Vegas people happy who are taking the points in this one. Again, last time I checked, it was 43. But OU... Uh, should cruise in the season opener. It should be Lincoln Riley's first win. And then, of course, the competition goes up about 8,000 degrees next week because you're playing the toughest team on your schedule throughout the entire year, and that's Ohio State. But once again, once we get closer to that game, we will have a uh, preview of it. Can't wait for it. Post game of OU versus Texas El Paso will be sometime on Saturday evening. I invite you to check it out. In my new segment, I can already tell you, nationally every week it's going to be called My Three Picks, in which I will be picking three games against the spread. It will be me versus the almighty coin. All right, we're going to see who wins it all this year. One year the coin did beat me, and I can't let that happen again. So make sure to check out My Three Picks coming up later this week on this very web page. And I still intend, by the way, on having, you know, at least a couple of more uh, team previews. Okay, so uh, please Keep up with that on this very page. Thanks for watching and Boomer Sooner.